Hello everyone, uh, and I'm really sorry I can't be with you at TEDx Exu um, in person uh, because of an urgent personal engagement I have. Uh, my name is Akitunde Oyebode. Uh, today I'm the Commissioner of Finance and Economic Development at the Akiti State Government. And when I was asked to speak with you, you know, I thought about many things I wanted to talk about. But I remembered one of the most remarkable TEDx talks I've ever heard. It was given in Boston uh, in, I believe, in 2012 uh, by a man called Clayton Christensen. Some of you may have heard of him. Clay Christensen was one of the finest thinkers of the 20th and even the 21st century. Um, he's an innovator. He's, uh, he was a professor of strategy who's sadly no longer with us. The title of his talk, which is also the title of his book, uh, which I love dearly, was How Will You Measure Your Life? And I thought to talk to you about what drives me, what makes me do what I do, what gives me a sense of purpose. I read Clay's book, How Will You Measure Your Life, many years ago. At the time I read the book, I was a cutthroat banker. I was only focused on two things. How much profit can we make and how much bonus? can I earn? And of course, how many holidays can I take after earning a fat bonus? But that book transformed my life like nothing else I have ever encountered. It's, it told me a lot of things. It showed me that purpose doesn't come from material wealth. It doesn't come from the degrees you earn. It doesn't even come from the positions that you get to. That purpose is much deeper. It means a lot more than that. And I thought I would share my experiences with you today. So what drives me? Ultimately, it's the understanding that I have a chance to impact the world. It's the understanding that I have a chance to shape the next generation. Um, and for me, it's also what dr drove my entry into public service. When I decided to call it quits with banking in 2015, uh, a few of my friends thought I was mad. I started to work at the Lagos State Government, where I was asked to set up the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. When I was offered that job, I initially turned it down. But then Governor Ambode, the governor of Lagos State at the time, said to me, this is the problem I have with young people. You agitate, you agonize, you criticize. Uh, and, but then when you have an opportunity to get in the kitchen, you decline. Uh, I still believe I was blackmailed, but it did the trick, because it was simply an opportunity I couldn't pass upon. So instead of packing my bags and heading to South Africa to work for Standard Bank, I packed my bags and off to Oregon I went to work and start an institution called the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. At the time I was asked to lead that institution, all I had was a sheet of paper that had the governor's vision in it. No staff, no board, nothing else, just me. Uh, but because I also recognized that people are the lifeblood of every dream, that regardless of how great your vision is, you need people to deliver that vision. The biggest thing for me was how do I build a team that outlives me, that outlasts me, and that can also take my own vision for the fund and drive it beyond my wildest imagination. Today, I haven't worked for the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund for two years two and a half years, but the fund has even grown bigger and stronger than when I was there. It's now a much bigger institution. It's still delivering incredible value to the people of Lagos State. And I look back at my time there with fondness, but I also look back, or rather I also look forward at what they are going to do in future with excitement and anticipation. But what gives me that purpose is knowing that I played a little role in the institution that is uh, existing today. Is that I did something very little to support what is today the biggest enabler of jobs across Nigeria and possibly even across the continent. And so when I was asked by His Excellency Dr. Kaede Fayemi to join his government, again, I said to myself, my family is in Lagos. I cannot come to Ekiti. And the governor said to me, well, you are from Ikole. At the end of the day, 
no one is going to come to develop a kitty. It's those of us who are from there who have the task of doing that. And I thought to myself, you know, they say history repeats itself. Um, I will even complete that saying because it's probably not very relevant in this context. But I thought to myself, this is history playing a trick on me. Uh, about 20 odd years ago, my father had returned to Adwekiti. In fact, over 20 years ago, he first returned to what was then called the University of Adwekiti, or Ondo State University, sorry, to be the inaugural dean of law at the Ondo State University, Oswa. Um, he completed that tour of duty and returned to us in Lagos. And we're very happy to have our father back. Um, but then a few years later, uh, after, of course, Professor Bordering had called him the first time, this time it was the turn of Governor Nia Adebayo to ask him to be the vice chancellor of what was then known as the University of Adwekiti. And he went there again and served the University of Adwekiti for approximately five years, where I believe he contributed to the institution that is now hosting this talk today. Why is this important to me? When my father came to Ekiti the second time, I was very angry with him. I said to him, we lost you to Ondo State for four years. Now we have you back. Now again, we're about to lose you to Ekiti State for another five years. Why are you even doing all of this? And a few days ago, my father had the pleasure of visiting me in Adwekiti. And he said to me, it's funny how fate plays a trick on us all. That here you are now, two decades after questioning my choices, walking in a similar path. And I laughed. And I said to him, there's only one reason why I decided to walk in that path. It's simply because I said to myself, the privilege that I enjoy is only because somebody decided to leave his own family, to leave his own comfort zone, to come to Adwekiti to establish Christ School. That Christ School was the secondary school my father attended, from where he got a national scholarship and the rest is history. But if there was no Christ School, he will still be in Adwekiti, or perhaps in Nikole, and I wouldn't have had the opportunities I have today. So I said to myself, it's only right that I give back to this community by also coming back here to contribute my quota to the development of Ekiti hoping that 20, 30 years from now, there are some young children that I might have supported or some of our policies might have helped who are themselves now coming back to contribute. And one step at a time, we continue to pay it forward and we continue to build the society of our dreams. One of my favorite poems is called Kaminate no He Kamino. Translated, it means traveler, there is no path. You make your path by walking. And it's for me a very fundamental statement that there are very many times where we are going to travel, not even on the less traveled road, but now on the untraveled road, where we do not trust ourselves. We ask, am I doing the right thing? Am I taking the right decisions? Is this risk going to be worth it? And I always say, we'll never know the destination if we don't start the journey. So when people say to me again, what drives me? Why am I in public service? Being a public servant is really difficult. You get criticized all the time. I used to be an ardent critic of government. Now I am on the receiving end of the criticisms I used to give. I remember when the NSAS protest happened. I was torn. There were personal decisions I had to take. Should I quit my job? Should I stay in my role? How do I rationalize this? But I said to myself, at the end of the day, this is a personal dilemma that being in government brings up. It's one of the sacrifices that you have to endure as a public servant. There will be decisions that you know nothing about that you'll be criticized for. It's part of the sacrifice of service. There are times when people will say, you are like the people that you used to criticize. Again, it's part of the sacrifices of service. You must learn, as Rudyard Kipling said, that when you meet triumph and disaster, you must learn to treat both imposters the same. Because in life, you are going to get good cards and you're going to get dealt bad cards. So as a public servant, 
I simply do not deal with any of them. Whether you praise me or you criticize me, at the end of the day, my job here is to do the best I can, to take the best decisions I can take in the interest of the commonwealth of the people that we serve. So again, when I'm asked, what drives me? It's simply one answer. It's one word. It's impact. Who are we impacting? We're impacting generations unborn. We're impacting the next generation of leaders. Like I said earlier, part of my story, the mission school that my father attended, the missionaries came to a country they didn't know. They didn't have to come here. But those schools that they set up provided education for young men and women. And that is why today, Ekiti is still seen as a fountain of knowledge. It is why today, we still have a high number of very well-educated people. And at one point, I used to joke that we have the highest number of professors per capita in Nigeria. But it came out of something that we did not plan, something that we, Ekiti people, were not necessarily a part of. But we embraced, and you can see the results of those activities. So I hope, if I'm going to leave you with a message today, it's a message that building a nation, building a society, is everybody's job. It's a message that if you have an opportunity to shape the world, if you have an opportunity to influence outcomes in your society, you shouldn't walk away from it. But it's also a message that we can influence society in many ways. Some can influence it like I'm doing being a public servant. Some can influence it like Brimo does through his music. Some can influence it through social media advocacy. Some can influence it at the barricades protesting against injustice. But you can also influence it simply by electing to vote to vote for good governance, to retain good governments, or to remove bad governments. Everybody has a role to play. You can even play that role by just influencing and educating the people around you. You can do it in your place of worship. You can do it in your place of work. You can do it within your family groups. It's also by ensuring that we reward good behavior and we punish bad behavior as a society. So we can all influence our society. And that, for me, is what gives me my drive. It's the one thing that I'm very passionate about. That for my time here, and even in other places, how do I contribute my little bit in shaping the next generation of leaders? How do I contribute my piece in democratizing opportunity uh, for young people? And at the end of the day, I don't think anyone, when they about to leave this place will ever think about how many cars they drove or how much money is in their bank account or how many works of art they collected. At the end of the day, what's going to matter most is how many lives did we shape? How well did we use the talent that God has given to us? How well did we use the time that God has given to us? So that's what gives me my drive, to shape society, to build leaders, to create opportunities for others the way opportunities were created for me. So thank you very much for listening. Again, I'm really sorry I can't be with you in person, but I hope that you enjoyed my talk, and I hope that I'll be able to do this in person sometime. Thank you very much.